Hi, this is John. I wanted to make a new video to show you uh, a new board that uh, is going to be available and also just kind of take a run through uh, the Geiger kit and the Geiger shield uh, all in one video. So as far as the Geiger kit goes, um, this is the version 3B board uh, that I've had out for quite some time um, and just recently I finished a uh, version 4 board now it's important to note that these boards are really identical as far as what they do and how they work and everything the only difference is is that the version 4 board is made to easily accept a LCD so you could just snap an LCD these are to the two headers for the for the LCD and that makes it easy to uh, instantly uh, you know have something going without wiring up normally the LCD is wired up from these pins here on the version 3 board now whether or not you're gonna case it that way uh, you don't have to you have the option of again running uh, running your LCD from uh, this these headers or you can run it even from these headers but other than that uh, it's they're pretty similar in function like totally similar in function so uh, we'll go on from here and uh, plug stuff in and I'll show you how they work I'll just stick with uh, this board here since it's uh, easier to demonstrate okay for just a quick tour of the of the board. This is your power input, uh, your high voltage output to your GM tube. This area here produces the high voltage. This is a pot to adjust the high voltage. You can go from about 100 volts to about 640. Um, this is the inductor that's responsible for making the high voltage. Uh, this chip here is involved in making the little beep on the piezo. Um, you'll note that on the version 4 board I ran the LCD wires out to the edge so that when you snap a display on you could still see the LCD. Uh, if you're going to put this in a case it doesn't really matter since you're probably going to put your LCD or LED rather on the case. Um, this is the uh, AT Mega 328. Uh, you can use it just for just as a regular Arduino this is just a terminal block uh, for plus and minus if you want to use it for something uh, and the uh, FTDI header and that is used for either reprogramming this guy or you can connect it to your PC and get a serial output of once a minute of, uh, of your current counts so the difference on the version 4 board is that uh, these two headers are on it um, and also a pot for adjusting the contrast of the LCD and other than that um, all the components are the same and the values are the same uh, and so you'll notice that the board is a little bit wider than uh, the version 3 board and so you know some people might want to stick with the version 3 board it is a little smaller and if you're going to put an LCD in the case it doesn't really matter okay so now I have a display plugged in and uh, that goes in those headers on the top and uh, tube and the thing is counting away uh, this is the uh, main format of the display and now you see that uh, there's an alternate display um, every four cycles of the main display it'll go to the other screen if you ground pin 10 uh, of the microprocessor so you got an option on it uh, but that gives you accounts for one minute and ten minutes you can see we're waiting on the ten minute count that's a good way of making long-term measurements Okay, so now we'll uh, go ahead and uh, uh, look at the logging shield. 
Okay, I put the logging shield on and without the display so I can show you what uh, what's going on on the board. So uh, over on the left here we have a micro SD card. Um, uh, all the data is written to that in a CSV format so you can plug it into your PC and look at it with Excel and graph and stuff like that. Um, this is the uh, contrast pot. Um, this is the real time clock and there's a battery backup for it here. Uh, this is a GPIO chip. Uh, what it does is it uses I2C to run the displays. This way uh, it saves a lot of pins on, on the uh, microprocessor so you can use it for other things. Uh, the display basically runs with two pins, uh, two, two IOs from the uh, microprocessor instead of the four or five that you normally need for an LCD. Uh, this transistor here controls the backlight so the program can turn the backlight on and off, save some power, and all the pins are broken out. These are the pins from the AT Mega and then there's a uh, dip switch here that uh, gives you some options. Uh, one is to uh, instead of making that jumper from uh, pin 10 to ground you can turn this switch on and get the same effect. Uh, and then there is um, a couple of other options. Uh, you can look on the web and, and see what they are. And uh, this guy right here is uh, an IR sensor. You probably want to mount that on your case. Um, there's a menu system in here and you control it with a TV remote control, either a Sony or a Philips. And so now we'll snap the display on and take a look at it. Oh, and by the way, uh, in order to use the shield, uh, you have to have a different uh, software program on this chip. So you have to either uh, get a shield with the chip preloaded or uh, change the program in this chip yourself. Uh, there's a couple of options, but since the display is an I2C display now, you won't get any display unless you reprogram the chip. So with the shield, you'll be able to log uh, the time and date and the counts in CPM, battery voltage, um, right to the SD card. You can also add a uh, GPS module. You attach it to this header here and then you'll have latitude and longitude also being logged. This way you can put that into uh, Google Maps and uh, uh, track the radiation levels along a trip or something like that. Okay, and then I got it fired up. You can see that it showed me the uh, file that it's going to create on the SD card. The date and time at the bottom of the display. And since I have that uh, dip switch set, uh, it's going to go to the alternate display uh, after it builds up counts for a minute. I'll give it a little juice here. Uh, by the way, it also has an alarm uh, that's settable through the menu and uh, when it reaches a certain amount, it'll drive a pin high. You can use that to uh, uh, trigger another piezo um, or whatever you want to do there. There it's gone to the alternate display. You can see the one minute, and we're waiting for ten minutes. So now, I'll just uh, breeze through the uh, menus that are available. Uh, again, you can use either a uh, Sony uh, or a Philips Universal Remote, um, and usually the kind with the three-digit code. Uh, you'll find one that uh, will be picked up by the. IR sensor on the shield. So to start the menu, you hit the power button. So this is the amount of seconds uh, for the uh, display period. You can change that, shorten it, lengthen it. Uh, you want 
this to be pretty quick so you can see trends in the uh, radiation levels. Uh, dose mode on, uh, that determines whether or not you're going to uh, uh, have that alternate display that uh, shows you the longer term doses. Uh, minutes logging, so this is where you would set how often you're going to log to the SD card. Um, this is the ratio of CPM to USB for your particular tube. Um, you can use the arrow keys to change it, uh, like everything else. Uh, this, this allows you to set it uh, to any value uh, without going into the program and changing anything. Uh, this is that alarm I talked about where if it reaches uh, 500 counts CPM or more, um, it'll pull that pin high and uh, trigger a piezo or something. And then these screens here are your uh, for setting the real time clock, uh, the date and time, and and such. Someone else um, also made a nice modification to uh, uh, the software that I had. So uh, if you press the info button on the remote, it'll blank the display. So that's a good way of saving power if you have a battery operated deal. Okay, I know I forgot a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, hopefully that uh, should give you the basic idea of what we have on the uh, Geiger board, both version 3 and version 4, uh, what the shield board does, logging shield board does. Um, and that's about it. Thank you.